This is a macro lens. I rarely use it, but this time I went in the park and did some macro photography. I learned seven lessons from this experience and I want to share them with you guys so that if you never did macro photography in nature before, you'll know what to expect. The last time I did this was 15 years ago when I was a teenager. So of course reality hit me with some lessons. This video is interesting because you're gonna get the perspective of a photographer that doesn't do macro photography in nature. Let's begin. I usually do street photography. This is what I enjoy the most. Macro photography is something new for me, but I wanted to try it to see if I like it. At the ending of this clip, I'm gonna show you all the photos that I took in that day. Okay, let's start with the seven lessons that I learned from this new experience. The first thing that I immediately observed was that macro photography in nature relaxes you. Really, if you want to chill, just go outside and do some macro photography. But why is this photography genre so relaxing? Well, it's because in order to do macro photography, oftentimes you have to stay put and just observe. The details that you capture with the macro lens are so small that you really have to slow down and get closer. By concentrating on nature, we get more of what nature has to offer. That relaxation. The second thing that I learned, and now comes the difficulties guys, if you want to capture something that moves, it's really hard to get that subject in focus, especially if you get closer to the maximum magnification ratio of your lens. Now, why is this thing hard? It's because being very close to your subject with the macro lens creates a very small portion of sharpness. This is how it is with the macro lens. One millimeter in front or behind matters a lot. Just look at how many photos I made to get the bee's eye in focus, to see the texture from its eye. Moving subjects are hard to photograph with a macro lens. But what about those subjects that don't have any legs, like a branch, a leaf, or the grass? Are these things easier to photograph? Yes, they are, as long as the wind doesn't blow. Third lesson, the smallest wind can create difficulties. If you never did macro photography before, also take this thing into consideration. It is the same problem as with insects. You find something to photograph and suddenly it moves and your subject is not in focus anymore. It helps, of course, to hold a branch with one hand, but this can only help you until a certain point. You can't hold everything in one place with one hand. So the wind, another obstacle for macro photography. Okay, but does a tripod help? Fourth lesson that I learned, a tripod slows you down. And 99% of the time, you don't need a tripod for macro photography. It's better to leave it at home. The fact that you have to carry it, the adjustments that you have to make each time you take a new shot, these things reduce your mobility, efficiency, and it also gets you tired. The combination of tripod plus macro lens is good when you want to do something really specific. For example, you know a spot that insects usually cross and you want to capture some frames there. Or you want to do a video. For videos, yes, a tripod really helps. But for a regular macro photography, I learned that the best place for a tripod to be is at home. Fifth lesson, you need a lot of light. When the sun goes behind some thick clouds, it creates difficulties. The ISO must go up and the shutter speed and aperture must be set at a lower value. For safety, a macro lens doesn't have to stay at its widest apertures. Also, for safety, the shutter speed doesn't have to reach values that are smaller than 1 250th of a second. It was already hard to take photos with a macro lens, but when the sun is covered by thick clouds, everything becomes even harder. The solution for this is a flash together with a diffuser. Sixth lesson, if you want to get some good shots, you really have to move. This is valid for the other photography genres, like portrait photography or street photography, but when you're concentrating on macro, your muscles stay in tension more. You have to bend over to sustain uncomfortable positions for some time. You need to photograph your subject from the right side, the left side, from above or below. This is how you find the best angle. All of these things put you to work. But if we want good shots, we don't have to be lazy. We have to move. This is what macro photography shows us. And now we've reached the seventh lesson that I learned. 
As you saw, only in the first lesson things are nice and easy, in the rest of them difficulties. The fact that macro photography is hard. Yes, it is. But you know what? It is worth it. Because you get to appreciate more of what's around you. You get to appreciate nature more. For sure, we see the importance of an insect if we spend more time with it and observe its behavior. Also, we get to appreciate nature's textures more. Yes, macro photography is hard, but it also relaxes us and it allows us to enjoy more of what's around us. These were my 7 tips for those of you who want to try macro photography in nature for the first time. For those of you who have more experience, please, in the comment section, write 2 or 3 tips for the macro photography enthusiasts out there. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and see you on the next one.